recording in progress. Okay, so, so yesterday we started the new chapter about braided uh, monoidal category. Uh, so we 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 mentioned the few uh, trivial example of braided monoid braided uh, monoidal category here. So the usual example set vec rep g. Uh, and also this one, when G is an abelian group. So you, if you take the usual transposition of component like that, you get a, a braiding. And in fact, trivially, if you compose again by the <coughs> yx, xy, you get trivially the identity. So it's always trivially symmetric. So let me let me uh, mention another symmetric category, but without the without trivial braiding, um, which we that will be called the super the category of super vector space. <clears throat> Example. So let. Okay, the field of characteristic different from two. Consider the category C of um, uh, uh, C2 graded vector space. C equal fake C2. So the category of C2 uh, graded vector space with C2, the cyclic group of order two. So we will provide a non trivial braiding on this category. <coughs> um, so Um, as follows, so for all x, y in C, you have x equal x zero plus so the, Z, the, the C two grading y equal y zero plus one. So the Rating and um, so we define the braiding, the non trivial braiding as follow. Um, <clears throat> so the non trivial braiding. Is defined on um, as follow um, um, on homogeneous vector homo homo sorry. <coughs> or with using. Homogeneous vectors x in xi, y in yi. <coughs> so i equal one zero or two or one sorry. And um, I should check here. I j equal zero. I j in zero one. And uh, 
So degree of x equal i, degree of y equal j. So this is the way you defined. Uh, so the degree of x. So if x, x here in this component then is degree zero, if it is in this component is degree is one, etc. So this degree is just tell you in which component of the Z2 grading, of the C2 grading, the vector is. And then, so you, 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 <coughs> you, you define the non-trivial, the non-trivial grading as follow, <coughs> minus one power degree of X, degree of Y, Um, then you extend by linearity, homogeneous vector. <clears throat> then extend, in the case of any vector, Extend by the linearity. So any any vector in in uh, x tensor y can be written as a sum of sum of uh, components like that with x and y homogeneous. Then extend by linearity. Linearity. So you have so it's not trivial in the sense that that may be. Uh, the so trivial one is when you only have that. So here it's almost trivial, but not trivial because you have this uh, multiplicative component, a sign. <clears throat> so it provides a braiding structure. Reading structure on C call called uh, super vector spaces. What is called super vector spaces is not the, not the braiding, but the, the braided category. Super vector spaces. Vec is vector spaces, and this is super vector spaces, and denoted S Vec. So this is really um, useful for people interested in the line theorem about symmetric symmetric uh, category. In fact, this classification involves such uh, subtilities. <clears throat> so super vector spaces and SVEC. Okay. So what is called super vector spaces is C with this braiding, not just the braiding itself. <laughs> Okay, so um, so now we will provide uh, another exa canonical example. In fact, the example we will mention now will justify the name braiding. <laughs> Because um, this example will involve the braid group. And in fact, we will see uh, in some sense that we will have a map from the braid group to the to any uh, strict braided monoyal category. We will explain in what sense. So Next example, 
explain the name braiding. So, in fact, this example will be uh, a monoyal subcategory of the category of tangle. So, if you remember, when we defined, when we defined uh, at the beginning of the, the semester, when we make some recall about uh, definition of monoidal category, one of the examples was the, was the category of tangle. And in fact, the category of braid will be a subcategory of the category of, of tangle. In fact, the subcategory where there is no loop and where every string connects a top point to a bottom point. Uh, so uh, I, will, uh, I will explain, I will draw an example. Um, the category of braid. What it be? So, uh, braid is a tangle. So C, C uh, beginning of the course, which corresponds to chapter two in the book. C chapter two, the beginning of the course. So is a braid without loop. Without loop and without loop. and every uh, string connect a top point. A bottom point. So I will draw something you will understand immediately. So in particular, <coughs> um, you, you must, to, to have a non-trivial um, braid, you must have the same number of, um, a non-zero braid, you should have the same number of points on top and the same number of points on the bottom. So the, um, the object, the object of the category are numbers <coughs> and in <of> that, <coughs> so the morphism. In fact, here, the, the, the category is named after, after the morphism, not after the object. Usually we, the name of the category correspond to the object that here is correspond to the morphism. So um C um B in fact um and M it is a set of braid with uh n string if n equal m and zero if n different from m. So the <coughs> so example of a braid, if n example with n equal four. Example with n equal four. So you start from uh, n four point, and you want to to reach four point. Otherwise, it's it's uh, there is nothing. So 
here is an example. Um, so you do like that. Um, so I wanted to make some non-trivial example. Tuck. And then here. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah. In fact, I remember. <clears throat> so this is an example uh, of a morphism. And here, uh, the, the tensor product, remember that this is just the addition. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so you can think that, yeah, you, generically like that, you, you, yeah, there is no closed loop. So in, um, for Tangle, you can have, you can have uh, something like that, or you can have some closed loop somewhere. So here it's not the case. You cannot have every string connect a top to a bottom point. Yeah, and the, there is no crossing. So yeah, it's something like that. <clears throat> so just, uh, I forgot um, last time, I forgot to draw a picture about uh, when we talk the reverse braiding. So I, I will not, um, I will not come back. So usually we draw the braiding like that. And uh, we, uh, we, we mentioned, so this is a braiding and we mentioned the reverse braiding equal uh, C inverse Y X. And in fact, this is just the, draw, the drawing of, of the inverse braiding is just, in fact, uh, when the, the, this string is on top and this one is on the bottom. Or usually we, we draw this one on top and this one on the bottom. So this is just the picture for the reverse braiding. For example, you have a braiding here. And here, this is a picture for reverse braiding. So yeah, the, re the notion of reverse braiding is just the, the reverse, the order of uh, uh, one is on top, the one is on the bottom. <clears throat> okay. So, um, so the category B is clearly, as I explained, the monoidal monoidal subcategory of the category of tangle. Of the category of Tangle and denoted uh, T. Okay, so we have this um, category of braid, and now we will um, define a braiding on this category. Th that category will be a braided category for the following braiding. So there is a braiding CMN. So here the, the tensor product is addition as follow. Define as follow up to isotopy. Define by the following picture. Up to isotopy. So you start. <clears throat> so it's a morphism. It's a morphism from M plus N to N plus M. So you start from N point, M point and here a morphism is just a braid. 
as we want to. In fact, this is just uh, such a braid. So you we will braid this this one with this one like that. We will have a big a big uh, and this one will be go something like that. <coughs> So you have like that, 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 and uh, some, etc. And here, so here it's M. Here it's N. So you see, this is a morphism. And this is what, this is a braiding we use on this monoidal category. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, now, uh, we will explain so I leave as, as an exercise that this is really a braiding, so it satisfies the hexagon um, relation. It's, it's uh, pictorially, it's, it's, tri it's trivial, in fact. <clears throat> if you make a pictorial proof, it's immediate. So, isotopy. So we will make the connection with the braid group. So isotopic classes. Of braids. On n with n string. From a group called the break group. From a group BN called the braid group. Braid group or braided group. Uh, so wait a minute. You braid or braided? Mm -hmm. Break group. Break. So break. Sorry, it's a break group. Um, called break group. In fact, not the break group. There is one brain group for any n, for every n. Brain group. Okay. So like for the free group. Um, and so, so it's a brain group under, under the composition of morphism. Um, so, so for n greater than or equal to two, this braid group is is uh, isomorphic to the group isomorphic. To a group generated by n minus one element and the following relation isomorphic to the group generated by uh, sigma one, sigma n minus one, and the following relation. And we will, we will um, explain. What is sigma one up to sigma n in the monoidal category, and what corresponds to uh, the relation? 
So you will have an explicit model of this uh, generator and relation in the category. So the following relation, which is uh, well known. So sigma i, sigma j equals sigma j, sigma i. When the distance between y, i, and j is greater than one. Second relation, sigma i, sigma i plus one, sigma i equal sigma i plus one, sigma i, sigma i plus one. Okay. And um, so observe that not that it is non abelian if and only if n is greater than or equal to three. Okay, so what is the model? What are the models for the sigma i? Um, to search sigma i are realized by realized in the category by um, id tensor I minus one tensor C one one answer ID N minus I minus one, which correspond to the following picture. Um, Um, pictorially. This is just so identity, then you have a ready, and then identity. <clears throat> I minus one, N minus I minus one. Okay, and the relation is as, as follow. The real pictorial <coughs> and the real picture for the relation. So pictures for the relation. So the first, so you just have to draw it. Right? What? So the first one is exactly like that. So you have um, uh, so, and now you have I. And you have this braiding and we want the distance between i and j greater than strictly greater than one so so uh, j cannot be here but it can be here or it can be here here etc so Let's put J here, etc. And then you compose uh, to here. So you have like that, and then Uh, yeah, yeah, nothing. So you have that. Uh, um, so wait, that should be a single thing. 
that. Okay. This is equal to, in fact, you just move a pictorially. In fact, pictorially, this is completely obvious. You just uh, put that here and that here. Okay, so this is equal to. Um, ta -ta -ta. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, etc. Okay. <coughs> Um, okay, this is here and this is here. Otherwise the rest is the same. So this is the first relation and the second relation, which so this relation is more or less straightforward. The second relation will be much more interesting for us because it will, we will see it will correspond to the young Baxter relation. So the, <coughs> This relation, in fact, is a young Baxter relation. So you start. There is an alternate, you alternate, you start from i and then i plus one and then i, or i plus one, i, i plus one. So you will see the picture. So you start. <laughs> At i, so then there is no so you put the i and then i plus one. So you have something here and then again i. And the rest is uh, trivial. Uh, trivial. Equal to, so you start, um, so here you have i, i plus one. You alternate i plus one, i, I plus one. Okay. And you see, this is the picture for the Young Baxter relation. So it corresponds um, to correspond exactly to the Young Baxter relation. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so it follow that uh, we have this um, this map between a bread group and uh, we can go from the bread group to the to any strict bredid monoidal category as follow. Mm 
it follow that for any object v with a strict braided monoidal categories. Si. There is a group homomorphism. Morphism from Bn to hot. So the hot C V. So, so the object D you make tens you tensor it by itself n time and you consider the so the, the isomorphism between that and itself. And so, like that, so you, you map this generator of uh, the break group to like to this uh, morph isomorphism, identity of V tends uh, I minus one, exactly as above, in fact, C V V, identity of V, so n minus e minus one. Um, yeah. For e equal one to n minus one. So you map them. So the braid group is generated by this element, so you only need to to give the map for this generator, and then you, you get, you get the, the, whole map, to the full map. Uh, okay. And finally, so if, if C uh, is, um, so if C, where is C? Here. If the braided, strict braided monodal category is K linear, then you get a, a representation of the braid group. So if C is K linear, we get a representation of the braid group of a the field K. Um, but not, no. Uh, well, you don't need to write that. It's not a representation, the, the vector space is not K itself, but it's a K vector space. <clears throat> okay. Um, Okay, so we have a representation of the break group like that. So we can get similarly a representation. We can do the same for another group called the pure break group. <clears throat> In fact, the pure break group is like the break group, but uh, in fact, uh, Here you see this point map to this one, this one map to this one, but you, you can, uh, for example, you can consider, you can make something compli complicated and this will map to this, this will map to this. So when a braid, when this map, one point will map to one, one point uh, which is on the front like that, this is trivial, but you can have something non-trivial. Uh, like that and like that. Anyway, so right, let me draw this algebraically. This will be called a pure braid. So when, um, so a braid uh, give um, a permutation of the point, and when this permutation is trivial, it's called a pure braid. <clears throat> so idem. 
when by idem I say we can do the same for as for the break group. The pure braid group EBN equal kernel of phi with phi the homomorphism from the braid group to the permutation. So you see this is here you have a permutation. You have, an, you have a permutation. <clears throat> um, one, two, three, four. So one map to three, two map to one, three map to two, and four map to four. So you have a permutation. <clears throat> so you have the homomorphism from the braid group to the symmetric group. And when <clears throat> The pure correspond to the kernel of that. So when the permutation is trivial. <clears throat> so the pure, yeah, the pure, so the pure brain group act on V1 tensor, tensor Vn with. Um, I in C. So here you need pure. You can have if V1 equal V2 equal Vn, you can have any <coughs> you can have any braid, but if they are different, you need the braid to come back to uh, to uh, the same point to have a to really have to act on this uh, object. <coughs> okay. And the last uh, point of the section bef before the next session will be about uh, the, what is a, a braid group, of what is braiding for of algebra. The last point of the section is an exercise. So state and proof McLean McLean braided theorem so you have McLean coherence theorem saying that you more or less you can uh, you don't need to care about the parenthesis you have a braided version Okay, so, uh, so uh, now we will start this section. Uh, so, braiding for off algebra. And the off algebra, when the category of representation is braided, will be called quasi triangular off algebra. And we will talk about that after the pause. So pause. You can, you can, tu peux mettre pause. Okay, let us restart. <clears throat> so this section will provide a characterization <coughs> of, of algebra whose representation category is braided. This section will provide a characterization of the hop algebra H such that the uh, tensor category rep H is braided. 
Um, so, uh, so here we will uh, cover the. So in the book, this this characterization was a bit short, according to the comment of Ulrich Thiel, and so we will. We'll cover the, the comment of Ulrich Thiel here, the comment of the book by Ulrich Thiel. We will here start by covering. Ulrich Thiel makes some comment about the book we are covering. And about uh, the beginning of this section, he said, but I, I agree with him, Ulrich, that it was a bit short and he provided some uh, comment about that. There is a H. So, a bit ex extension of this uh, beginning of this section, which is very useful for the course here. So, um, so we start with the off algebra, make some notation. So let H be a Hopf algebra. Then H tensor H is also a Hopf algebra. Um, to consider an object, an element in H tensor H by uh, um, so Swidler, you use Swidler notation. Swidler notation. H, R, R equal R. So it's a Swidler notation. So this mean, this notation mean, is it a sum of tensor product of uh, element of H? But this is a, the well-known Swidler notation. So this mean equal to a sum of something tensor something. <coughs> well-known notation in uh, of algebraic theory. Um, then, <clears throat> then we have three way, three ways to see R in H tensor H tensor H. <clears throat> so you <clears throat> three ways as follow R one two which is R1 tensor R2 tensor 1. R1, 3, like that. You put the one in the middle. No, R2, 3, you put the one at the beginning. Okay. And the theorem, Let H be, uh, so should we put finite dimensional or not? Maybe to avoid any problem, we may put finite dimensional, but in fact, it was not specified finite dimensional, so it should be true in general. But I have a, a small doubt, so I put that in parentheses. And then, the tensor category uh, R rep H is braided 
if and only if. Um, H is quasi triangular, and quasi triangular will be explained, will be defined in the statement. It's quasi triangular. Which means there exists, there is an invertible element uh, ah, H tensor H. Um, Such that so this un this uh, such that this invertible element R will be called uh, the universal R matrix. So it's a notation uh, usually called universal uni. Universal R matrix. So here it's not the here the element is called R. Or you, yeah. So the letter R don't play the same role here. It's R matrix, it's just a notation, a notion, R matrix. And here the element is called R. But don't, don't worry. So it's to recall the universal R matrix. Such that uh, you have, in fact, as we will uh, briefly explain in the proof, here is a way to, re to reformulate the hexagon. <coughs> so what is it? Uh, Hexagon. Uh, so wait, hexagon action. But I put a A in my note and I don't have A. So it's H, I guess. Identity of H. Of R equal R13, R23. <clears throat> so you see R is in H tensor H, sorry. So you apply identity on first component and the co-multiplication second component. So you get something in H tensor H tensor H. And this is the product of two elements in H tensor H tensor H. So it's well defined equality. So as I said, that correspond to the hexagon show. So identity of H tensor delta R equal R13, R12. And the last. <laughs> So these two correspond to the hexagon axiom, and we need the last equality. <clears throat> um, for, for all H in H, the opposite co-multiplication of H is R delta of H, R inverse. H in H. <clears throat> Up equal sigma delta the opposite co multiplication co product co product or co multiplication co multiplication multiplication where sigma 
is a flip equal to the flip of component. So uh, yeah, x y y x. This flip. <coughs> Okay. The opposite comic multiplication. So, um, so this is called um, that can be called this last relation is called quasi co commutativity. Um, quasi. So if R is trivial, this is precisely the co-commutativity. And, um, and um, so there is one one correspondence between braiding rep h and uh, universal r matrix universal r matrix on h okay so proof, so brief proof. I'm um, not brief, but uh, just the sketch of the proof. As I said, I, I don't. The goal of this course is not to uh, to provide full details about uh, the of algebra point of view. So I only provide some uh, short sketch proof. When we discuss about the result specific to of algebra, as usual, so first part. So first way, let HR be a quasi triangular, be quasi triangular of algebra. Um, Sorry, yeah, it's not very readable. I say that because we will use the flip also to, um, we need the flip to define the braiding from the R matrix. So let HR be quasi triangular of algebra. So let us make a braiding on uh, rep H from A as follow. Um, so let X, Y in rep H. We define the braiding H Y from H tensor Y to Y tensor X. So X tensor Y map to the flip of R of X tensor Y, which is exactly with Swigler notation, R2, Y, tensor, R1, X. <clears throat> it has a flip.
Okay, so. Hmm. So R is, where is R? Invertible. So this is, uh, CHXY this is a H module. And in fact, it's an isomorphism because R is invertible. It is a morphism, not H module, but a morphism of H module. So it's a H module. So it's a morphism in the category rep H. It is an isomorphism because R is invertible. Okay. As I said, this relation corresponds to the hexagon axiom. So you, you get directly the hexagon axiom using this relation. It's a, it's a direct computation. Um, by a direct computation, um, the hexagon axiom follow from the relation for a so C is a Brady. Okay, now, what about the other way? So, the other way, so you start from a braiding and you want to make A. So, conversely, let C be a braiding on rep. Define R as follow the flip composed with the <coughs> braiding of H and H, seen as H module, applied on <coughs> the, uh, the vector one. one. In fact, uh, mm, 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 mm. Um, so wait, 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 wait. So R is an element of H tensor H. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's okay. <clears throat> uh, one is an H. Hmm. Okay, so um We can check that. Uh, we can check that we can recover. We can we can check, but using this R and above formula, above uh, construction, here you you recover C. You can check that uh, such. R and above construction recover C. Hmm. 
Um, and um, the relation for R follow from the hexagon action. And you have to be careful a bit about the third. This one is not precisely the hexagon action. The hexagon action are these two. So you have to be careful about this one. Uh, OK. So as I said, I don't want to go into too much detail. So if you want more details, <coughs> about this uh, proof, we should go to the reference mentioned by uh, Yulorich for more details. See the book. Hop, algebra, quantum group, and topological field theory by C. Uh, wow, Schwiger. I don't know how to pronounce that. Algebra quantum group. And topological field theory. by C. Schweiger. Schweiger, I don't know how to pronounce. Okay. So, um, so at the level, <coughs> at the level of uh, of algebra, of a quasi-triangular of algebra, the young baxter relation, can be reformulated in terms of the universal R matrix. At the level of quasi triangular algebra. Uh, the Young Baxter relation can be reformulated using the universal R matrix as follows. R12, R13, R23 equal R23, R13, R12. And in this, so for of algebra, quasi triangular of algebra, such relation is called quantum Young Baxter equation because. Uh, in fact, Hopf algebra are sometimes called quantum group. I don't know. Baxter equation. But anyway, in fact, Young Baxter equation, Young Baxter relation in general, the fusion category, tensor category can be seen as quantum symmetry, representation of quantum symmetry. So anyway. This is uh, usually called like that in the literature. Okay, so I don't provide too much details about that. Um, so let's mention some notion. So if the braiding is, what is, uh, so now,
we will characterize um, so what was the, the formula what did I say we provide a characterization of the alpha gamma yeah we will characterize alpha gamma H such that rep H is symmetric. So remember that symmetric means so to be symmetric, you need to be braided with some additional um, structure. And here, the characterization of such of algebra will be called triangular of algebra. So symmetric, remember that it's that. Cxy compose Cyx equal identity of Cy x tensor. OK. So in this case, in this case, R inverse equal R two one equal R two R one in a Swindler notation. Uh, Such R is called, so no such equality is called unitary unitarity condition. Unitarity, I don't know why. Unitarity, unitarity condition. Uh, <clears throat> so in this case, you have that, and the converse is true. The converse is true. So if you have that, then it's symmetric under the previous theorem. So equivalence between a quasi triangular structure and existence of braiding. <coughs> um, so we define. So. Uh, the quasi triangular of algebra such that uh, so, so R matrix is a uh, satisfies the unitarity condition will be called um, so such R will be called unitary and the such quasi triangular of algebra will be called quasi triangular. So unitary, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about the notation, but the relevance of the notation. Definition. Let H R uh, quasi triangular of algebra. When I say I'm not sure about the notation, I'm sure this is a notation used in the book, but I'm not sure whether this notation is relevant. So it should be, it should be a mainstream, it should be what the notation used in the, in the literature, but yeah. Um, so quasi-triangular of algebra, if R inverse equal R to one, then, R is called unitary. So if it satisfies the unitary condition, it's called unitary. Uh, and um, HR is called triangular, is called the triangular. Uh, 
Conclusion. As I, as I said, h are triangular. It's a leaf. At the category at the categorical level, the symmetric. Okay. Um, so, um, here is a trivial example. So, if H is co commutative, there are two R, sorry, two M. Then, so the trivial R matrix provides a structure of triangular structure. It's a it's a triangular structure of H is a triangular structure on H. To remark, then thus quasi triangular of algebra generalized co commutative of algebra quasi triangular of algebra generalized. Commutative of algebra. And you can you can you can make the same uh, same thing for notion of co quasi triangular and co triangular and commutative of algebra idem for so let me write it in another color <clears throat> idem for co quasi triangular and commutative So, co quasi triangular. So, the commutative of algebra has a structure of co triangular, has a co triangular structure. So, co quasi triangular generalized commutative, etc. So, hmm. here is. Um, Um, an example without quasi triangular structure, in fact, trivially without, <coughs> because we, as a, this, will be, we, this will correspond to the fact at the categorical level that the, if the Grothendieck ring is non commutative, there is no bread. <coughs> yeah, the same. If you consider the commutative of algebra of function. Of a group to from a group to a field. If the group is non-commutative, then you cannot have quasi-triangular structure. So let H equal function of the commutative of algebra of function. From a non commutative, non abelian, in fact, we usually use non abelian for group. In fact, non commutative and non abelian is 
is exactly the same synonymous. So a non-abelian uh, group from a non-abelian group to a field K. Then H has no quasi-triangular structure for trivial reason. Quasi-triangular structure. Since rep H is isomorphic to VEC G and the Grotendieck ring of VEC G uh, having a non commutative Grotendieck ring. So rep H cannot have a braiding. So H cannot have a quasi-triangular structure. So non-commutative Grotendieck ring is that in general, X tensor Y is not isomorphic to Y tensor X. <coughs> okay. Now, uh, let uh, me provide. Now we will provide. Uh, so we mentioned two. We mentioned two uh, braiding structure on the category vec C two, the category of a vector space braided by a cyclic group of order two. We have the trivial braiding and the braiding coming from using the degree as we mentioned at the beginning of today's course. And we will provide the, uh, the R matrix in this case. So the two is an equivalent symmetric fusion category. Fusion category vec C2 and S vec so uh, inequivalent as symmetric fusion category but equivalent as fusion category equivalent as fusion category what is different this is the braiding. Uh, well, so um, so C two C two cyclic group of order two generated by some vector. By some, uh, so you can write it as generated by a single cyclic, mean generated by a single element. Here you write this element G. Uh, okay. Uh, so let me write that cleanly, a bit cleanly. Straightforward. Tac equal G. So this this means the group generated by one element such so that the order of this element is two. Okay. I said that because I need we need the element G to write the universal R matrix for the super vector space category. <clears throat> um, um, okay, so we C2 
see able. So we already mentioned that. So these two uh, different symmetric structure correspond to these two R matrix triangular R matrix matrices uh, on C2 as follow. So the first, the trivial one is that, and the second is can be written like that, one half of one tensor one plus one tensor G, G generator of C2 plus G tensor one minus G tensor G. Okay, so that's okay. Um, <clears throat> um, so next week, we will start by mentioning the main example of quasi-triangular of algebra. Uh, it is the so the main family of example the main family example of quasi triangular of algebra. Uh, is given by Greenfeld double. This is not surprising because we, as we already mentioned, the Greenfeld double correspond to uh, the Greenfeld center of the representation of, of algebra uh, uh, with the composition of the forgetful functor. And so we, we know by the previous theorem that this is a, so this Greenfeld double is obviously quasi-triangular. So you have a family of quasi-triangular like that. We by a Greenfeld double. So I will mention more about that next week, a bit more. DH of finite dimensional of algebra. Okay, it's defined as a center of rate H equal rep of Greenfeld number of H with the composition of forgetful functor. So we automatically know that by the previous theorem that this has a quasi-triangular structure. But we will see that uh, next week. So end session. <coughs> okay. C'est bon. Ugh. <sighs>